Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Communion Sunday. It's Communion Sunday. Um, in, in, the, in the 19th century, back in 18, 1814, they, uh, in New Orleans, it was, the, it was the bubonic plague, which caused people to be uh, comatose to where their vitals said that they were dead. So late at night, when they would be walking by the graveyard, they would hear people scratching on the coffins. So then they would go inside and open the coffin, but the person wasn't dead. So they said, how do we fix this? So they made an announcement, we're gonna put a string inside the coffin and tie it to a bell so if that person comes back they'll pull a string and they'll hear the bell ring and so then they would go inside of the tomb to let them out this is where the term saved by the bell came from but what they fail to understand the bell name was Jesus this morning you rang the bell. You've been saved by Jesus. No matter what puts you in the position where as you think you just about go under, ring the bell. You don't have to tell anybody. All you got to do is like this. Now, now people see you doing that, they're going to think you're crazy. But what they fail to understand, <laughs> I've been saved by Jesus. I'm just ringing the bell. I'm just ringing the bell. Pull your string and ring the bell. This is what scripture says. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations. His marvelous deeds among all people. Here it is. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He's to be feared above all gods. Lord, we say thank you for being the bell and allowing us to answer the bell. Thank you for the wake up call this morning. Thank you for allowing us to even hear the fact that you heard the bell ringing. Because then those that walk past, oh God, on that late night shift, just to monitor hearing the bell, they call it the graveyard shift. Thank you for allowing your angels to do the graveyard shift. Because, oh God, late last night when we were asleep, we were at our weakest moment. You can't even defend yourself. But yet, the angels that were sent, they heard the bell. It said, not tonight, for we have something for him to do. God, you're worthy. You are so worthy, and we thank you. We give you all the glory and the honor, for it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, 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 and amen. The synopsis of our belief. We believe in God the Father, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord. We believe in the Holy Spirit who endows the believers with spiritual gifts, the infallible word of God, forgiveness of sin, salvation through grace and faith in Jesus Christ. We believe in the rapture of the church. We believe God responds to our needs progressively through proclamation, preparation, prayer, praise, perspective, and prosperity. We believe we are called to change lives in the world in our lifetime. With the help of Christ, we are life changers, changing lives in our lifetime. Anybody love Jesus this morning? Come on. Anybody love Jesus this morning? Come on. Would you do me a favor? Just greet the person on your left and your right. Say, I love you with the love of the Lord. How let's roll be. Come on, tell them. Woo! I love you with the love of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's roll be. Our God reigns this morning. Woo! Come on, let's go. 10 o'clock. Oh. Father, we love you this morning. You're the infection of our life. 
we give you glory honor and praise thank you for the opportunity to worship you we don't have to do this we get to do this i get to lift my hands i get to come i drove here in my right mind i got life i got health i got strength i have energy hey we don't take that for granted this morning come on church glory glory you get the glory this morning lord you get the honor this morning it's an honor and a privilege to worship you this morning all right i got the call you got the response come on some says my god reigns my god reigns our God reigns. Our God reigns. Oh Lord, you reign, reign above every name. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Oh Lord, Lord you reign above, above every name. With power and majesty. With power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion. Good morning, my God. You reign. You reign. Oh, come on, get your energy high. Power and majesty. Come on. With power. Oh, you. Let's go back to the top. B. I got the call. You got the response. Let's go. Some said, My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Oh, Lord, Lord you reign above. Above everything. You get the glory. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Oh, Lord, Lord you reign above. Above everything. Power and majesty. Come on. Your voice, power and majesty, with power and dominion, dominion, authority. You reign. You reign. I want to hear just the voices. Be back to the top of the song. Song says, My God reigns, my God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns. Oh Lord, Lord you, you reign. Come on, above every day. My God reigns, my God reigns, our God reigns, our God reigns. Oh Lord, Lord you reign. Above, above, above power and majesty, with power and dominion, dominion oh, you reign. Reign. Ooh, that's what we came to do, with power and majesty, with power and majesty, dominion, dominion, dominion you reign, you reign, goes higher, yeah, yeah, my God reign, my God reign, Come on, church. Oh, Lord, Lord, you reign above, above, above every name. You get the glory, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Oh, Lord, Lord you reign above, above, above every name. Power and majesty. Power and majesty. Dominion. Dominion above. Oh, Lord, you reign. Power and majesty this morning. Come on. With power and Dominion, you reign. Every round goes high. Every round goes high. Come on, my God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Oh Lord, you reign. Come on, above every name. You get the glory. My God reigns. My God reigns. Our God reigns. My God reigns. Oh Lord, you reign. Above, above every name. Over my circumstance. Over my Testimony, church. Over my circumstance, come on. Over my circumstance, you give me another. Hey, you reign. Every morning, his mercies are new. Over my circumstance, over my circumstance, you give me, give me another. Come on, you reign. Just one more time, y'all. Over my circumstance, over. Say, hey, you reign, you reign, you reign. Y'all got it three times. Let's go. You, you, you. Let's go. Come on. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. That means I give you full authority. Come on. You reign, you reign over my life. Come on. You reign over my health. Hey. You reign. You get the eye, come on. You reign, you reign, you hate, you reign, you reign, you reign. Let me hear just the voice and speak. You, 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 you. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. Over my life, over my health, over my favor. Come on. You reign, you can pull the forest. 
already. You reign. You reign. You reign. Well, let's take a praise, but let me see your hands. Let's go. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord oh, rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise. Oh. I got half of y'all. Let's go. Let the glory, let the glory, let the glory. Let's go. Let the glory. Let, let the, the glory of the Lord rise. rise among us. Glory. Let the glory of the Lord rise. rise. That's what we come on. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise. rise Let the glory. Let the glory of the Lord rise. Praise the Son of our King. Praise the Son of our King. Rise. Rise. Let it rise. We cry, oh, 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 we cry, oh, come on. I declare and decree a thing, God will establish it. Healing, 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 healing in the room. Healing, 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 healing. Y'all got in the room. Let's go. Here it goes. Healing, 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 healing in the room. Oh, healing. Healing, 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 healing in the room. Do it there. Healing. Now go! Joy, 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 joy in the room. Oh, 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 joy. Joy, 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 joy in the room. Oh, 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 joy. Joy, 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 joy in the room. Clap your hands. I feel joy rising, Bert. No, 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 no. Joy, joy, joy. Joy in the room. Joy, 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 joy in the room. Oh, joy, 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 joy in the room. Say y'all, come on, joy, 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 joy in the room. Come on, healing, 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 healing in the room. Oh. Oh, joy, 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 joy. Let's go. Have you. Lord, 
have mercy. Somebody's getting healed now. No, 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 Oh, 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 healing, 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 and everything else. But I'm celebrating somebody's healing this morning. Come on. Healing, healing, healing in the room. Oh. Heal, let's go, y'all. Oh, healing, healing, healing. Healing, 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 healing in the room. In my mind. Healing, 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 healing in the room. In my soul. Don't get tired, come on. Here, let's go. Healing, 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 Put your weight on it, come on. Healing, 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 healing,
Come on, church. Woo, come on, clap your hands for your joy. Come on, for your healing. Healing in the room. Healing in the room. I receive my healing in the room. I receive my healing in the room. <laughs> I don't know if you know this song, Bert. When I was growing, they would say, The devil is a liar and a deceiver, too. God's not through. <laughs> Blessing. Come on, touch yourself. Me. You know, the devil is a liar <laughs> and a deceiver, deceiver, too. Here's the truth of the matter. Hands high. God's not through. Blessing you. Would you put your hands on your ears? I want to be obedient. My grandma always taught me when the devil gets in your ears, he came up too high. His rightful place is under your feet. Come on, touch your ears. When the devil gets in your ears, he done came too high. His rightful place is under your feet. Now begin to pray for your ears. Come on, pray. Say, you a liar, devil. Come on, tell him. Every word curse is a lie. I will be healed. Come on, speak it over yourself. Everything that's not of God that you're speaking to me in the midnight hour, come on, get in your rightful place. Now come on, stomp your feet. Come on. That's why, come on, stomp your feet. Under your feet. <laughs> Woo! That's where he belongs, church. He belongs under your feet. Well, my soul, let's roll with you belong under our feet this morning. Yes, God. You don't came too high. You in my ears. Hallelujah. I just feel breakthrough in the room, bro. I don't know who that's for. Right on the beat. Come on. I lift my hands in total adoration unto you. You reign all. For you are God and God because Come on, take the song, church. I can sing. Come on. I can sing. All together, come on. I live, I live, I live. Come on. I live my head. To total adoration unto you. You reign on the throne. Come on, tell him. You reign on the throne. For you are God. For you are God. And God alone. Because of you. Because of you, my cloudy days are gone. Oh, I can sing to you this song. I just want, I just want to say that I. Let's sing it one more time, baby. everybody. Come on. I lift my hands in total adoration. Come on. I lift my hands in total adoration. Come on. You reign on the throne. That's him. Come on. You reign on. For you are God and God alone. For you are God and God alone. Because of you, my cloud is it. I got a testimony. Come on. I can sing to you this song. I just wanna, I just wanna say that I love you more than anything. Come on. One voice. I love, I love, I love, I love you. Come on, raise the church. I love you, Jesus. Worship and adore you. Come on, tell him. I worship and adore. Just wanna tell you. Come on, Lord, I love, Lord, I love you more than anything. Don't get it twisted. He deserves all the attention. I love, I love you, Jesus. I love 
Worship and adore. I worship and adore. Just want to tell you, Lord. Just want to tell you, Lord. I love. Lord, I love you more than Let's go back to the top of the song, bird. Come on. I live, I live. No boy, no music. Come on. I lift my hands in total adoration. That's it, church. Come on, church. You reign on the. Come on, tell him. You reign on the throne. For you are. For you are God and God. Woo! Because alone. of you. Because of you, my God. And from the ashes we rise. I, I can sing. To you <laughs> I just want to say. Love you more. Let's go. Come on. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. Worship and adore. Come on. I worship and adore. Just want to tell you, Lord. Just want to tell you. Lord, I love, Lord, I love you. More, more, more. Oh, Oh, yeah. I love, I love you, Jesus. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. Worship and adore you, Lord. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you. Just want to tell you. Lord, I, Lord, I love you more than anything. Ooh. Would you just take a moment and out of your own mouth begin to tell God how much you love him. Come on, church. We sang about it, but now let's talk about it. Come on. Ooh. Out of your own mouth. Out of your own personal relationship with your father. Come on. Ooh. Let's just take a moment and talk to him. Nobody's judging you. Nobody's even listening to you. It's just you and God. Come on, tell him. If you want to close your eyes, raise your hand. If you want to look up to heaven, whatever you want to do, let's end this moment. We've sang about it. Let's talk about it now. Come on. He loves to hear your voice. Come on. He loves to hear your voice. Not your singing voice, but he wants to hear your voice, your talking voice. Come on, talk to him, church. Lord, I love you with all my heart. You're the love of my soul. Come on. You're the love of my soul. Lord, I cannot make it without you. I've come to the conclusion I need you to make it. I can't do it without you. Come on. I messed it up too much on my own. Now I'm saying, Lord, okay, I need you. I need you. Hey, just want to tell one voice. Just want to tell Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you more than anything. Let's just linger there a little longer, Bert. Just play. Come on. It's okay if we just linger just a little longer. Come on. When you're in God's presence, it's just so sweet to be in his presence. Come on. Let's just linger there. Come on, church. Even in the choir, let's just linger in his presence. Come on. I don't have to work this up. The same power that lives, that raised him from the dead now lives in me. Come on, church. <sighs> because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you my song. <laughs> I just want to say Love you more than anything. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Some of y'all are saying, Pastor, Pastor, I'm in a cloudy season right now, but by faith, because of you, my cloudy days are gone. I can sing to you, by faith to you this song. I just want to say that I love you more. It's pulling on me, whoever you are in that cloudy season. It won't always be like this. I don't know who you are. God will perfect that concerning you. Sooner or later, 
it's going to turn in your favor. It's turning around for you. Who are you? If you don't mind, I just want to harp there. Somebody said, now listen, I love these songs. Of Pastor Jay, you don't even understand what I'm walking through. And if I could be honest, I'm just going with the motions this morning. Oh. If that's you, would you come join me at the altar? I'm just, I'm, no, no shade, come on. You don't understand what I'm walking through. I'm lifting my hands, but I'm hurting. Come on, I want to meet you right here. Come on. Thank you, Elder, for being your obedience. Thank you. I'm rocking, but I'm hurting. Uh-oh. Thank you, Morgan. Come on. I lifted up my hands because you told me to. I didn't really want to. Come on, join me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going with the motions, you know? It's church. Hey, smile. We're in church. But I want to come against that in the name of the Lord Jesus. It won't always be like this. The Lord will perfect that concern. I know what I felt. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the witness. Oh, but sooner or later. I don't want to play on your emotions. I want serious folk. Turn in my favor. You know your place. Come on. Turn it around. Now let me explain something. First lady is not our prayer mule. You got to pray. She has an anointing to pray and God hands on her life. But when she's praying, you got to attach your faith to her faith. We don't just throw her in to just make it happen. I want to just break that down in the name of the Lord. Could you see her coming? Uh oh, no, 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 no. You got to pray. Are you ready? Come on, I want you just to pray against that. Come on. Before I pray, somebody went to have some tests done. And you're going back this week to get the results. But the Spirit of the Lord is saying, this atmosphere, because of this atmosphere, every test will come back negative. Every test will come back negative. Every test will come back negative. My God, 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 my God. That's why you got to put yourself in it. When, when worship, praise and worship begin to take place, you got to put yourself in it. Because you don't know what God is going to do or can do if you open yourself up to him. Woo. Let us pray. Oh God, our God, how we bless your name this morning. God, we thank you, oh God. We thank you this morning for life, for health, and for strength. We thank you this morning, oh God, because the devil is defeated. The devil is defeated this morning. And we declare that no weapon that is formed against us, it will not prosper. So, Father, this morning, every person around this altar, we pray now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, for your manifested healing power to fall down upon them right now in the name of Jesus. You said in your word that, that sickness and disease cannot stay. You are our healer. You said you sent your word and you healed us, God. So no matter, no matter our situation, Satan, you are a liar from the pits of hell. We declare our healing in 
the name of Jesus. And whatever I brought to this altar, I'm leaving it there. 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 Come on, church. I'm leaving it there. I'm leaving it there. In the name of Jesus. Come on, church. Come on, church. Sometimes we come so often for someone to pray for us. But I've found the generosity of God moves when you begin to pray for somebody else. When you begin to believe that God is going to do something in somebody else's life, the spirit of generosity of God begins to take on your situation as well. Heads bow, eyes closed. Repeat after me. Dear Lord, move on my neighbor whose hand I hold. I want you to do something for me. But God, do it for my neighbor first. There you go. God, do it for my neighbor. Come on, come on, I need you to get it. Hold that hand. God, do it for my neighbor. Heal my neighbor. Deliver my neighbor. Give my neighbor peace. And don't let nothing or no one take their peace. I agree with your word in the name of Jesus. You said we can decree and declare things, and it will be. So I decree and declare peace for my neighbor. Shake that hand. Deliverance for my neighbor. Healing for my neighbor. Bills paid for my neighbor. In the name of Jesus, it is so. Come on and give God praise right there. Come on and give God praise right there. Come on, no, praise him for your neighbor. Not, not for you, praise him for your neighbor deliverance. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you now, God, for this vessel. We thank you now, God, 
for all, oh God, that you have placed in him, oh God, to bring forth to your people. Now, Father, we pray that as he prepares to leave, that no sickness or disease will come upon him, oh God. Oh God, we pray now, God, that this will be a trip like none other, God. Have your way in the very midst of them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we cover him under your blood. We pray a hedge of protection about he and Pastor Mo right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in advance. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on and give God praise. I receive that. I received that. I received that. This is Can't Miss Communion Sunday and the beginning of the month of every month. We begin in a particular way here at New Life. We begin it with congregational prayer. On yesterday, there were people in congregational prayer. They were praying all through this sanctuary, touching every seat, anointing every seat before you ever got here. We continue this on today as God moves. We continue this week. Wednesday, we are fasting. Amen? We're turning our plates now for 12 hours. We'll come and we'll break that fast right here in, the, in this church on Wednesday night as we prepare for the word. This is what God does when you give him your first fruit. You thought I was talking about money. Let me say it again. This is what God does when you give him your first fruit. Your first fruit of your time. In the name of Jesus. This is the first of the month. How many of you want a blessed month this month? It starts with you giving him your first fruit. I'm not talking about money. Get your mind out of that. The first. Seek ye first. And everything else. That's the word. Now, we either going to believe it or not. Seek ye. Father, we receive right now. We've given you the first fruit of this month, our time, our prayers. We're turning our plate down on Wednesday. We're going to hear from you, God. But God, we come now asking you to honor your word in every area. Meet our needs this whole month. In Jesus' name, healing, deliverance, provision. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. And amen and amen. Come on and make some noise for him on this morning. Come on, you can make more noise than that for our Lord on this morning. I'll say this and then we'll transition. You know, we had March and it was kind of things how we were doing, but every now and then, you gotta have a blowing out of the Holy Ghost. And I ain't happy unless we go two or three weeks and Holy Ghost ain't been in here and blown us out. Amen. I'm, I'm wondering, now we don't try to conjure God up, but every now and then, Lord, I need you to, I need you to blow on me. Anybody in here with me? Every now and then, I need you, Lord, to blow through this place. Blow through me. In the name of Jesus. I want you to greet the person to your right, your left, your front, your back. Amen. Then leave who you came to church with and greet that person as well.
section, make some noise. B section, make some noise. C section, make some noise. C section, y'all, y'all tired? C section over here chilling, ain't he? They say, you know what? All that worship and praising, I'm tired. Can we hear from you, C section? Balcony, let's hear from you. Yes, yes, yes. Turn and look at that camera. Turn and look at that camera. Said, we wish you were here, but we're glad you're there. Stay tuned for a great word. The word today, come on, look at that camera. Say, the word today is fraternity suit. Uh, Y'all ain't ready for that one, huh? You ain't ready for that one. It's chosen. It's Paternity suit. Paternity suit. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. It's so good to see you. On behalf of First Lady, myself, and the entire First Family, I want to just simply say welcome to New Life. I want to shout out uh, Life Changers. Life Changers, are you in the house? You, you went above and beyond. You did an outstanding job. Our attendance goal for Resurrection Sunday was 700. We were just over 800. Come on and give God praise. You can do a whole lot better than that. Yeah. And both services, the culmination of both services, and we thank God uh, for you being evangelistic. Let's continue that. Let's continue that. Let's continue to reach out and be evangelistic. If you came to church today, it's your first, second, or third time joining us today. Uh, we want you to join us right after worship. We won't take much of your time at all. To my left, your right, is standing Elder Mobley. She will take you to a reception right after worship. Right after worship, First Lady and I will spend just a little bit of your time. We have a gift for you. If you want us to know, if you want us to know that you are first, second, or third time, we just, we got to have our life changer what? We got to have our life changer check. You were supposed to be greeted at least five times, five times, once in the uh, parking lot, at the door of the church, at the door of the sanctuary, and the fourth time is during this time, and the fifth time is the reception. But we added a little more to it. If you were first, second, or third time, then we asked you as you came in, maybe you saw the, uh, someone, the greeter saying, if you would just do the QR code, you get that uh, gold card and everything, and we put the gift in your hand right there. If you want us to know that you're here, would you raise your hand just, we, can we give our guests, come on, come on. Come on, we're glad you're here. We're glad first, second, or third time. First, second, or third time. First, second, or third time. How, did you get a, how many, you got more than five? You got five greetings? Okay, all right, all the way in the back, did you, all the way in the back, did you get, you, five? Yeah, you got five. Great. We passed the test. Come on, y'all. Come on. Right here. Did you get five? All right. Good, good. Come on, come on. We passed the test. Come on. It's very important. It's very important that you are greeted and welcome into the house of the Lord. Please meet Elder Mobley right after worship, and uh, we will have a, a little bit of a reception for you right after worship today. Man, it's so good to see you all on this morning. I have a word for you on this morning, and uh, I'd like for you to, um, and I uh, want to thank First Lady for, all, I was going to mention it, but I do leave this Wednesday um, to uh, Ghana, and uh, so that I can go to the village in which you said you were sponsoring the children there. And I will actually look at, amen. I will actually see them choosing us in that village. And uh, if I have any kind of Wi-Fi connection, you know you're going to see a picture of mine. Amen. You said, now, Bishop ain't going nowhere without taking a picture. Amen. I am going to do a vlog as well. I'm going to do a, a vlog as I go. So I need you to cover, cover my, me, but not only me, First Lady, in my absence. Amen. And... Uh, uh, the elders will be leading, and they will be ministering the word with uh, great power and anointing. Amen. So that is what is going to happen uh, in um, 
my absence, please cover us in prayer. This year, we're doing a little something different. One of the niches and um, unique things about our church is leadership. Our leadership summit this year is going to be in Warner Robins at Wisdom Church. We're going to go down there and strengthen that church. Amen. And so I want you, please, to register to go and be with sponsoring bands. They're going to give you the information. Don't wait. It's going to be in June. It's going to be in June. And I really want you to go and be there as we go down as another part of the Fellowship of Churches that is under our covering. We shared that with you in March of all of the churches that are under our covering. And we want you to be with us uh, when we go. Uh, finally, before we have the 411, many of you, if not a large percentage of you, said, I'm in for the vision. After you receive the three messages on the vision and you put your little glasses on and you saw the 3D image and everything, well, you said, well, what is the next step? The next step is that we're having an ice cream social after the third Sunday, the 21st of this month, right after worship, we're having an ice cream social. And we want you to come. Whether you signed up or not, we want you to come. And then we're going to give you where you would like to go and share with you various things in the church. For the men, we already got some places for you. But we want you to plug in. Come to the ice cream social. Going to have the 411. Then we're going to change lives in our giving. And I got a word for you on this morning. Chosen. Paternity suit. Paternity suit. Amen. 411. Welcome, Life Changers and guests. I am here to give you your 411 so you know what's happening here at New Life. We're still in First Things First. Join us this Wednesday after our fast for a light meal at 6 p.m. You still have the chance to choose to be chosen. Bishop is traveling to Ghana to see every Life Changer get chosen by a child. Let's fill up the entire wall with life changers. Scan the QR code and upload a picture of your choice to opt in. Ladies, let's get together Saturday, April 27th at 9 a.m. for our Women's Health event. It's Reveal Sunday. If you and your family has made the decision to sponsor a child in Ghana, you can see who chose you April 28th. Parents, is your child being promoted to elementary, junior high, or high school? We want to celebrate them during Education Sunday. Please take the time to fill out the form for your child. Ladies, it's time for more sisterhood. Come fellowship with Women of Virtue for a Mother's Day brunch, Saturday, May 11th. Scan the QR code to register. It's DK, and we're back with another Did You Grow? And we're in the book of Job this time, beginning our section on wisdom literature. If these are the things you think of about when you read the book of Job, you're missing the point. So I've got some frequently asked questions. When was it written? is so well crafted that one can find it fitting into contemporary context while never allowing one to ascertain its province, leaving one to think it is some of the oldest literature in the Bible and defies identification of its origin to the point. The reader is led to far deeper thought. Does it talk about dinosaurs? No. How about does it answer the question, why do we suffer? Not really. Is it really about Satan? Sorry. It's ancient philosophy. Job is with his friends, and he's got friends in low places. Three wise guys represent the best theology of their day. One young one offers a new yet very Hebrew perspective, as they're the new kids on the block. And God surpasses them all, going all the way back to the beginning. Job is the weathered old man in the room. We all should be learning from, but no one wishes to approach because we're afraid of what we might encounter or how long it might take because we're in a hurry to get nowhere fast. And we sure don't want to carry that man's burden, but we will if we don't learn in the burn. However, if we do, it is that we can turn to God no matter what to get us through it all. See you next time for the book of Psalms. It's back. That's right. Summit 2024 is here and will be hosted by Pastors Mac and Frida McCullough in Wisdom in Warner Robins, June 20th through the 23rd. 
Scan the QR code to register now. Are you leading in the rooms that you're in? Check out Bishop Liz, I Lead in Any Room podcast featuring special guest, Pastor Jamal Bryant at ileadacademy.net. Life groups, which one are you in? It's never too late to join. Scan the QR code to join today or stop by the table in the lobby. If there are any teens in the sanctuary, you are now dismissed for Teen City. Please see an usher for further instructions if needed. Did you miss your chance to get your merch for last month's Family Sunday? Well, guess what? You can be prepared for this month's Family Sunday by scanning the QR code and ordering your merch today. Most of what you heard today can be found in Linktree. Here's the code and here's what you see. There's a QR code to this in the note taker and in the newsletter on page two. If you're a guest with us for the first, second, or third time, we want to know that you're here. Let us know by completing the go card, see an usher, text the word welcome 689 to 54244, or if you're worshiping online, click the link in the chat. Hey! Amen. Let's uh, prepare to give in that way. Now, there's many ways that you can give. I'm going to walk through them. But one of the particular ways that we really want you to uh, focus in on is our new app. The app, as was shown in 411, is not just about the giving. My notes are in the app. Um, everything that's coming up in the life of the church is in the app. Anything that was about to happen that you need to know and instructions about it is in the app. So we really want to encourage you to do that. You can see the many things, uh, the wisdom trip, you can go ahead and sign up for that. Uh, my notes, as I said, uh <coughs> the world vision, please. W there are 167 of you that signed up. We want to get to 200. We want to get to 200. It's not too late. It's not too late. I really want us to have at least 200 children that we are sponsoring in Ghana, in Africa. And let me just share this as I'm sharing. Sometimes people say, well, why are we going way over there to do something? Why aren't we doing something right here? Well, if you go to the app, you will see that we're doing things right here. We're also doing things right here. We have outreach every quarter. And I think this quarter is loads of love. We go to a uh, laundromat, I think over in Belleville this time, and we just pay for everybody's laundry for that day. It's just that what we do. And then we're going to be gas on God. So we're doing things both locally and globally. Amen? Amen. So let's walk through the various ways that you can change lives with your giving. Right here, old-fashioned way, just write the check and put it in the basket. Online, just touch that uh, link and it'll take you right to where you can give or givelify you can do it with the qr code if you do cash app we really want you to tell us a little bit of who you are so we can give you credit for your giving at the end of the year everybody should have something in your hand because we not only give we give our tithe our tithe amen we believe in our tithing and let's begin to prepare to give our tithe and offerings can give with your device let's see your device if you do not have your device or giving with your device then raise your hand for an envelope an envelope the ushers are ready to give you an envelope when you came you got the newsletter for today there should have been an envelope in there he said don't come before him empty hamlet so everybody should have something in your hand as we get ready to give holding it before the lord and our offertory declaration with our outside voice Dear Lord, you said I can decree and declare a thing. So I decree and declare 2024 is my year of more. To be more like Jesus. To learn more of his word. To serve more. To give more. To pray more. To attend church more. To evangelize more. And here we go. To have life and have it more abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, we come right now 
that you will bless the giving of your people. Turn these two fish and five loaves that it may change lives in our lifetime. Give me and the senior leadership of this church the wisdom to administer the treasured giving of your people. Father, we pray according to your word that you said you will return to us 30, 60, 100 fold as we give our tithes and our offerings. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, and amen. Now, before you start, I just want to remind you, in old school church, they just say, well, just touch the basket and you'll be blessed. No, ain't got nothing to do with you touching nothing. Amen. Put some in it. Put some in it or touch it with your device. Amen. You may be seated. Y'all ready for the word? You ready for the word? If you're watching right now, I need you to do a couple of things before we get into the word now. What I need you to do, tell us how many people that are watching with you, share it right now and put the revelation that you're about to get, put that in the chat area so others can get it as well. Give me a little more on my monitors, Derek. We're good in the house. If you could just give me a little more on my monitors, if you would. If you're ready for the word, let's stand, let's get ready. Amen. Now there's a couple of things, there's a couple of ways in which you can get the word, right? Okay, there's a couple of ways that you can get the word. Uh, one, you can get the uh, sermon notes in the QR code. And as you came in today, today we have our newsletter. So you would have had this note taker as well. Now, I would prefer that you use the note taker that's going to come down in your device. So if you can take your device out, take your device out and use the QR code because that's going to get you a little more than the paper. I have a little more than just this paper that you'll put in your notebook. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to go ahead and get those notes and put it in your device on this morning. Amen for our guests. Thank you so much for being with us on this morning. So good that you are here uh, in the presence of the Lord with us. Please don't forget our reception right afterwards. Our memory verse, we got to get back to the flow of our memory verse in March because we had a different kind of a flow of the messages. We kind of got out of that. Our memory verse, you ready for the memory verse? This is the memory verse for the month of March. It is also the sermon text that we're going to be teaching from. We began this on last week. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, read it together. John 15, 16. 
you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. And so that whatsoever you ask in my name, the Father will give it to you. Hold it before the Lord. I am here to learn that my life will change and that I will change the lives of others. It is so in this moment and in my life. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, I ask you now, Lord, that you will help me to minister your word. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you my strength and you are my redeemer. Bless your word in this place and enlarge it in me. Turn my lips of clay and the portals of heaven that you will pour out upon your people the very seed of your word. Sift my thoughts from afar. By the time that they reach my mouth, they are straight from the portals of heaven. Father, we decree and declare that your word will go out. Revelation will come. Word of knowledge will come. Changing lives will come. Souls will be saved. Lives will be changed. People will connect to your house. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, God and amen. Can you repeat after me? Chosen. There's a paternity suit concerning you. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Oh neighbor. Chosen. There's a paternity suit concerning you. Who be your father? Leave that person. Leave that person. Find another person. Find another person. Say chosen. There's a paternity suit concerning you. Who be your baby's daddy? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. A review and then we will move into the message. On last week on Resurrection Sunday, we began this whole series on Chosen. We talked about the fact that here we go. We said that in this context, typically when we read this 15, 16 from John, when we read this, we, we, we go straight to the fact that he's about to die, and he is. We go straight to the fact that he's in the upper room having this theological discourse, and Jesus is. But we miss the context of what is actually happening. What is actually happening is this. Jesus is reminding them of their journey. He said, I chose you. You didn't choose me. That would go right over your head unless you really grab the context. Here is the context. The context of the text is this. That during biblical times, moms would bring their Jewish boys at around the age of 12 or so, and they would want the rabbi, and a popular rabbi in particular, to pick their sons that they would become disciples of that rabbi. If they were picked, they would also hope that they would follow so closely that the dust from the rabbi, and this was what they thought and said, that the dust from the rabbi's sandals would fall on their feet, the disciple. If they went that close, then they would get to the point in which now they too would become rabbis. If they were not picked, then they would just live ordinary, mundane, average lives. You go to the disciples and you will find that when Jesus saw them, Nathaniel there is under the tree, when you saw that the Peter and his brothers, they were fishing, when you saw Matthew, he was collecting taxes as Levi, the tax collector. As you saw all of them, they had clearly moved on with their average lives. Why? Because they had not been, come on class. So now here is Jesus saying, well into your life, well into your life, when it was just regular average mundane, you weren't going to be anything spectacular at all. I chose you. Wow. I chose you and I have said to you, you need to be fruitful. 
Yeah. So there we have it. Here it is. And, and Jesus says, I, I chose you even when you were yet a sinner. He said this to us. Well, this morning we continued this series with the paternity suit. And I brought along for you Maury Povich, the theologian, to help you understand what I was talking about. I assume that if you're the father, you will be in this child's life. I will take care of the kid. Right. I'm not taking care of her. We don't expect you to expect you to take care of your son. When it comes to five-month-old Elijah, Johnny, you are not. Some of y'all have watched that at least once in your life. <laughs> Who your daddy? Oh, y'all don't want to answer, let me come over here. Who your daddy? Fifteen, sixteen. he says, you did not choose me, I chose you and I appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. I cover those three things. I said he chose you, he appointed you, he anointed you. I shared with these, let's press even further. I want to add to the text from John 15, 16, now 1 Corinthians 6, 20. It's not often that I move from text to text, but they all will come together. In 1 Corinthians 6.20, it says you were bought with a price. When Jesus chose the disciples, he pulled them out of obscurity. When Jesus chose the disciples, they went from nobody to somebody. I want you to skim the lives of the disciples after Jesus chose them and what took place in their lives. The faith of the 12 disciples. I have laid it all out for you. If you have the note taker and if you have it dropped down in your device, it is far more than in the paper. But let me just walk down. Here they are, Simon Peter. Simon Peter, the tradition holds that he was crucified upside down in Rome under Emperor Nero's persecution. He did not want to be crucified because he did not feel like he could be crucified like Jesus. So they turned the cross upside down. Andrew, he, was, he preached in Asia Minor and Greece. Tradition suggests he was crucified on an X-shaped cross in Greece. James, son of Zebedee, he was the first apostle to be martyred, likely around 44 AD. King Herod Agrippa martyred him, beheaded him. John, uh, tradition holds that he lived a old age, to an old age, one of the eldest of all of the disciples, died probably around 100 AD in Ephesus, which is now modern day Turkey. Philip, he preached in Greece and Asia Minor. Tradition suggests he was martyred in Phrygia by hanging. Bartholomew, Nathaniel, as we know him, accounts vary by him. Tradition suggests that he preached in India and Armenia before being filleted alive and then crucified or beheaded. Thomas, he is believed to have preached in India where he was martyred by spearing and stabbing Matthew, the publican, the Levite. Here he was, the tradition holds that he preached in Ethiopia and then was martyred by either beheading or stabbing in Persia, now Iran. James, son of Alphaeus, details about him are limited, but tradition suggests that he may have been stoned to death, martyred in some other way. Thaddeus or Jude, he is believed to have preached in Mesopotamia, Persia, now Iran, before being martyred. Accounts of his death vary. Now, Simon the Zealot. Little is known about his life. Some traditions suggest that he preached in Egypt or Persia. Now, Iran was martyred, but the details are unclear. Judas Iscariot. You know how he was taken out by his own hand. 
These accounts are based on early Christian tradition and historical writings, but they may contain legendary elements and some details remain uncertain. While you are not called to be a martyr, because some of you are wondering right now, is that the level you're about to take us, Bishop? No, but he did choose you for such a time as this. Bump your neighbor and say, you were chosen. Esther was chosen for her time. David, despite his proclivities, was chosen. Moses, despite being a murderer, was chosen. Saul, despite his jealousy, was chosen. Abraham, despite his lying spirit and 25 years of spiritual formation to get his act together, was chosen. Jacob, a straight-up thug, a swindler, was chosen. The Bible is littered with flawed lives being chosen. Our tendency is to romanticize the biblical characters' lives as if they were perfect. They were perfect in their faith in Jesus for their salvation. But this morning, you know, they were not just chosen. They were not perfect in their choosing. This morning, I need to shatter your theological glasses. If God knows the end from the beginning... Does he not? If he knows the end from the beginning, then he knows what they were, who they were, when he chose them, before he chose them, and while he was choosing them. Then why did God choose them? If he knew all of that, why did he choose them? Let me press it even further. You came here to learn. Amen. So let's go even deeper. Matthew 26, 24 says, woe to that man by when the son of men is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had never been born. Jesus talking about Judas, but Jesus chose him. Jesus chose him. Even though he said it would have been better that he had not been born, but he still chose him. Mm. Let that marinate. If Jesus picked Judas, then I want you to grab three points so that you can understand why he picked you too. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, he picked you too. Look at your other neighbor. Say, he picked you too for such a time as this. He picked you too. Three things we're going to cover. They're not going to take long. Amen. Speed the process. Silence doesn't. I'm just telling you the God honest truth how this thing works. Amen says that you're getting the revelation. Silence says that I'm at a place that you need to listen even more. Picked over, picked for, picked from. Picked over. Psalms 139, 14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. I want you to take out your baby picture or look at it on your phone. I ask you if you would bring your baby picture to church. Who that? Who that little fellow? Need to go on a diet, didn't he? When I text you, when I text you and I said, hey, bring a baby picture or put it on your phone or what have you, or, or bring the paper one, and I, and, I, and I robocalled you and you hung up on me before you got to that point. <laughs> and I said to you, I'm not going to ask you to share it with anybody. I'm not going to ask you to show it because I know some of y'all said, now, Bishop, you'll set some folk up. I ain't going to do it. I ain't going to do it. 
I want you to take a look at that baby picture of yours. Everything that you are and will be, God wove you to a specified design in your mother's womb, even down to the illness and diseases you would have a predisposition to have. Now take a selfie, take a selfie, everybody take a selfie. Can you take a selfie? I want you to do the same thing, I want you to do the same thing. You're watching right now, I want you to do the same thing. Take a selfie, take a selfie, take a selfie. Take a selfie. Now compare the two, compare the two, compare the two. Somebody say, oh, Jesus. <laughs> I didn't know whether or not, I didn't know whether or not, um, there, was there another picture other than the baby picture? I didn't want to move to this point that quick. That's way, uh, uh, uh. there we go. Here, here's this little fella. This is at my grandmother's house. This is my sister. One of my eldest sisters who's still alive. This is my sister. This is my brother who's with the Lord. I'm the youngest of 11. I got a fresh cut too, don't I? <laughs> this is me in kindergarten. Me in kindergarten. Got my little diploma. Now compare the two. The you that you are looking at now of your selfie is the you that you were in your mother's womb. You are the you in your mother's womb that you are right now. That you. Now think about the transformation of your life from one picture to the next. All the pluses in your life, all the minuses in your life, all of the equals in your life, all of the multiplications of good, bad, ugly, and indifferent, but God still picked you. And he knew the end from the beginning of your life. Revelations 22, 13 says this, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Isaiah 46, 10 says this, I make known the end from the beginning, from the ancient times, what is still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. Romans 8, 29 says this, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. If anyone else had known everything about you from the beginning, they would have picked over you and not picked you. God, I would say that one more time. If anybody would have known all of the pluses and minuses of your life, do you think they would have still picked you? If you're sitting beside your spouse right now, look straight ahead on this one. Do you think they will still pick you if they knew what you turned out to be in the process? My God. What would have happened? Here's the first point. They would have picked over you like a puppy. Anybody have the opportunity to ever go pick some puppies from a litter? When you go or even to the pet store, you do not pick the puppy that's laying on their side. It, 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 any puppy that, that you go in there and you start petting on any of them and the puppy that turns its belly over is the submissive one. But the one you pick is the puppy that's going around and, and biting on everything and, and running here and there. You said, that's the one I want. Well, you weren't that one. You were the one that rolled over and showed your belly. But he still picked you. Even though you were picked over. Look at your neighbor and say, you were picked over. 
I look at you, look at you. Some of y'all say, uh, not me. Yes, you. You and I were picked over because we were picked for. Ephesians 2.10 says this, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. The Greek word for workmanship is pumia, which means poem or poetry. In other words, Paul was saying we are not a piece of work. You know, you said that about somebody. You, know, you a whole piece of work. But you are a work of art. Repeat that. I am a work of art. Come on, shake your head like you know it. Come on. Come on, put your hand on your hand and say, I am a work of art. There is um, no one else just like you. You are uniquely made. You were uniquely made for the canvas of God. Every piece of artwork has its place. Classic, modern, medieval, renaissance, impressionism, realism, romanticism, Africanism. There are at least 14 periods of art. Like art, you have a unique brush stroke of God and time period in which you are to make your mark. I want you to write that down. Like art, you have a unique brush stroke of of God and time period in which you are to make your mark. I have a cousin that um, that uh, is with the Lord now. He's an artist. He's a really well known artist in uh, Greensboro, North Carolina. And um, here is some of his art. When you probably in the day when we were buying a lot of uh, African art, you may have even bought that piece. If you have African art, look down at the author of uh, the uh, artist and you may see Floyd Newkirk. That is the rendition of his art. This is actually a compilation. Uh, my mother is the, his mother is the light impression right behind the preacher who has his hand up. My mother is the one that is having her hands together in the tambourine. It's a compilation of that. He went to A&T University in Greensboro. He was out of school a long time before I got to UNCG in Greensboro. Here's the story. I wanted to know, because I'm inquisitive, I like information, I just simply wanted to know, what makes good art? His answer was surprising. He said, what makes good art is the consistency of the stroke of the artist. Wow. Can you say that's deep? <laughs> he said, it is the consistency of the stroke or the brush stroke of the artist. I thought he would say, maybe it's this or that, or maybe it's colors, or maybe it's this thing, or, or maybe, maybe it's this is what's beautiful, and that's what's beautiful. No, he didn't go to what we typically would think, oh, what art is beautiful, or that's not beautiful, or what have you. He says, the consistency of the brush stroke of the artist is what does it. I need you to know that when God started making you, there was a consistency of the brush stroke. I don't look like you and you don't look like me, but baby, there was a consistency of the brush stroke that turned out to be me and turned out to be you. I'm right about it all day. Won't you say amen? You know, the fact is, is that there's a consistency of the brush stroke. What is the consistency of the brush stroke? All of us are human beings. 
Ah, you missed it. Everybody is a human being here. And therefore, however the person may look, whether they come to this earth crippled, whether they come to this earth in one way or the other, or how they ever end their journey in life, the consistency of our humanity is what makes us who we are. So we so quick to pick over folk when they don't look like we Oh, God. We're so quick. Ooh, I like a light skin brush stroke. I want a white brush stroke. Ooh, I want a good old deep black brush stroke. Hmm. Bump your neighbor and say, we're all human. So you picked over you picked for a particular thing because you've been picked from. Been picked from. First Corinthians 6.20. First Corinthians 6.20 says this. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. When Paul writes these words, he raises the theological point, even though God wove us in our mother's womb and artfully crafted us for a time as this, we had to be purchased. Let me explain. In the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve sinned, God lost the rights of us. Hmm. He had to purchase us back. So God and Satan has a paternity suit. God, you better hear what I'm saying on this morning. You see, I don't want to bust your bubble, but yes, I do. The fact is, is that we have this tendency to say that we're all God's children. Some of us ain't as chilling. We were all woven. We were all created by him. But are we all his children? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, who your daddy? Look at your other neighbor and say, other neighbor, who be your daddy? Maury, Maury, Maury had to come in here and raise the question. You've been laughing for a while at Maury Povich, but he raises a, a, a relevant question for us on this day because I need to know, uh, who is your daddy? The only way we know that, that, that the father is your daddy is whether or not you have accepted his son as your savior. You better hear what I'm saying right now. You better hear what I'm saying right now. I know it's common. I know it's popular to say, oh, we are all God's children. No, we were all created by God. But we need to find out something here. Who your daddy? There's a paternity suit out right now. And if we turn your blood work in, If we turn your blood work in right now, would it have the blood of Jesus? Would it have the blood? Because the children ought to have the blood type of come on up in here. Something's wrong if my blood type ain't my daddy's blood type. Have you accepted him as your personal savior? Do you know him in the pardon of your sin? He has purchased you, but have you accepted the price? God, hear what I'm saying to you on this morning. 
Maury is raising the question. Uh -huh. Up your neighbor, do we know he your daddy? Yeah. Yeah, it's in the text. It's in the text. I told you we were going to circle right back to the text. The text said that I've done this. I chose you that you might be fruitful. And the way that we know that he is your daddy is that there ought to be some fruit hanging off your limbs. Oh, my God. There ought to be some fruit. What kind of fruit? Then go to Galatians 5 and you will find the types of fruit. Love ought to be hanging off of you. He said, I know them by their love. Help me, God. Some of us already quick to snap off on somebody. He's long suffering is one of the fruits. How is it that you can't stand nothing? You can't go through nothing. One thing and you're ready to throw in the towel. What is this thing that you can't have no long suffering? Where is the fruit of the spirit? You ought to have some fruit hanging off for you. If he's your daddy, you ought to look like him. Glory to God. You look like everybody but him. I ain't talking about clothes. We don't preach clothes here. I'm talking about the spirit of the living God on the inside of you. Oh, I can't hardly wait till we get to Pentecost so we can talk about being baptized in his spirit. Sometimes it's just not an ain't sometimes. You, it ain't enough sometimes for you just to get saved. You ought to go down in his Holy Spirit that we might have some fruit on your life. Everybody's going to go through something. But how you get through it will depend upon the connection you have with your father. You've been bought with a price. Some of y'all ripped the tag off you. Story, I come back. I remember when I was a kid and I was working at Winditsi Grocery Store in Goldsboro, North Carolina, in high school. And there were some friends of mine who came. Now, this is before a lot of y'all time. You, know, you don't remember. You see, we have, uh, uh, we have uh, barcodes and all of this. This is the time when you had a little price machine that was stuck on the thing. Well, some of my friends came in and they scraped the, the, the prices off and then they put some other prices on and then they sauntered up to my line. I was a cashier. They literally thought that I was going to put my job on the line by putting in them lies on them groceries. Some of y'all walking around now with the wrong price on you. And you think he's going to check you out because you got the wrong price on you. God is at the cash register. Said, I'm looking for the price I paid for you. I paid good money for you. I sent my son for you. I sent him and he died for you. And on the third day, he got up for you. And now you're going to saunter up to my cash register and think you're going to walk right on in to heaven like you all right. The devil is a liar. Slap your neighbor high five and say, who your daddy? Who your daddy? There's a paternity suit in heaven and we're waiting to see. God is waiting. Sitting there in front of all of the heavenly court. Pensively waiting for Maury to say, you are Help me, Holy Ghost. Somebody said that uh, when you're born, you look like your parents, and when you die, you look like your decisions. We 
when you died, you ought to look like him. He chose you. Will you now embrace his choice by accepting him into your life? I know this is a, a nicey gospel now that we're all God's children. Maury said no. The DNA test has come back. And we're looking for the fruit of the spirit on your life. I'm not done, but we got communion. Stand on your feet. This is the series for this month, Chosen. Grab your neighbor's hands. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I just want to read for you. But the fruit of the Spirit, I'm in Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. There ought to be some love in your life. Agape, commitment. Joy. In the midst of your hell, there should be the joy of your salvation. Peace when everything is going crazy. Patience when I just want to snap off on somebody. Kindness. Compassion is when I really need to share. Goodness. Faithfulness. Gentleness. Self-control. Self-control. Always ready to tell somebody, give them a piece of my mind. If that's all you got, keep it. I think you missed what I just said. That all you got is a piece and you're willing to give it away. If I were you, I'd hold on to the little piece you got. Heads bow, eyes closed. See, operating in your life, you're not sure. If you were to die tonight, you're not sure where you would spend eternity. Is he your father? Or you know he's your father, but you wandered away. You left God. God didn't leave you. When you look on your limbs, there's not much fruit at all, if any. And you know for yourself, or perhaps like many fruit trees, you need to be in a grove with other trees. You are without, you're standing on the outside looking in. You are not connected to a church or a body of believers. Squeeze your neighbor's hands. You see, fruit trees do better when they are in a grove because there has to be cross-pollination. You can't be out here dangling by yourself talking about I'm going to be good, I'm going to be all right. No, you're limiting the amount of fruit that will be on your life if you're not connected. I need to be connected. I'm not connected. Squeeze your neighbor's hand. I'm not connected. I need to be connected. Squeeze your neighbor's hands. Squeeze your neighbor's hands. I don't know Jesus in the pardon of my sins. I've never once ever once says, Lord, save me from my sins. I just simply need prayer. Squeeze your neighbor's hands. His word has gone out. I know it will not return void. If somebody squeezed your hand, if anyone squeezed your hand, then kindly, gently just kind of tug them, bring them 
to the altar. The doors of the church is open. Whosoever will, let him come. The day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. Come, come. Clap, 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 clap. I need to connect. Come on, clap, 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 clap. If you clap, they'll come. Don't you stop clapping. Oh, you're here. You're wondering. Should I connect? Should I come? Oh, my. I'm not certain. Yes, yes. Don't stop clapping. Don't stop clapping. Don't stop clapping. You're here on the balcony, in the balcony on the main level. Maybe you're in the hall. You've been watching on the monitors. If you're watching right now, we give you the opportunity. All you have to do is text the word decision to 54244. Text the word decision to 54244. Text the word decision to 54244. Don't stop clapping in the sanctuary. So I'm disconnected. I need to be connected. I need to be connected. I need to know who my father is. How many of you received the word today? Come on and give God a hand clap of praise for as we prepare, as we prepare for communion, as we prepare for communion. While you're standing, I'm going to pray over the elements because this is what he says that, um, that we should examine ourselves. And that by examining ourselves, he doesn't have to examine us. Is it because there are many who comes to this table, who come to this table, and um, there are things that are in their lives that need to be taken care of. And in the book of Corinthians, he said it's so serious that some sleep and are sick because they come here with mess in their hearts. It doesn't say don't come. It just simply say get it right. Just get it right. So we're going to pray now. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you've given us this opportunity to come before your people and to serve them. Give us clean hands and a pure heart. Father, we ask for forgiveness for the sin of omission. We ask for forgiveness of the sin of commission. We thank you that you have forgiven us of the sin of adoption. For we know, Lord, and we know you in the pardon of our sins. So, Father, as we take from the table, you said as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of you. Remember us. Reconnect us. This we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you, God. And amen. Amen. You may be seated. The ministers, deacons, and elders are coming now that we might serve you the Lord's Supper.
This is the covenant meal, the New Testament meal, the meal that our Savior turned from the Paschal Old Testament meal to the New Testament meal. And so doing, and so doing, he brought into covenant, the covenant meal. We are a covenant church. We're in covenant with me, your bishop. You're in covenant with each other. And we are all in covenant with God. Amen. This symbolizes his body. Take, eat ye all of it. This symbolizes his blood. Take, drink, ye all of it. I forgot that if you were a life changer and you have taken the life changer class and you finished that, would you come up to the stage with us now? Come on, give our new life changers a hand if they're here that have finished the covenant class. Clap, 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 clap. On that night, on that night, on that night was a fellowship. They left, they greeted one another, they greeted one another and they sang a hymn. We will do the same, we will not give benediction I will give this, uh, take the time though right now. We'll take the time right now that, uh, amen, come on. Yeah. I will take the time now that if you are first, second, or third time, first, second, or third time, can we give it up for all of our guests, for our reception? Elder Mobley will meet you to my left. Don't stop clapping, don't stop clapping for all our guests. And if you're watching right now, text the word WELCOME689 to 2444, 54, thank you, 54244, 54244, amen, amen. How many of you received the word today? We continue this chosen series all month long. Please lift us up in prayer as we travel. Remember, this is our first things first of the month, that we'll have a beautiful, powerful, prosperous month as we fast on Wednesday, break our fast together as a congregation for our light meal and then our Bible study. Amen? Amen. I will see you at the door. Please bless the person to your right, your left, your front, your back. Please bless those individuals.